your name and why you're calling one more time, please? Yes, the Hollywood studios vilify anything corporate or capitalist. Indeed, Karl Marx, one of Hollywood's A-list writers, made capitalism his number one enemy. It's therefore no surprise that the number one swear word in Hollywood is profit, and the number two swear word is corporation. Is it thus any surprise that almost every Hollywood movie also makes the greedy, profit-driven corporation the bad guy, and the Uncle Sam government the good guy? Atlas Shrugged, a pro-corporation movie based on a best-selling book, was turned down by the Hollywood control group for decades. Ayn Rand wrote a book called Atlas Shrugged. This book was kicking around Hollywood for decades and decades. Even though it was a bestseller, nobody in Hollywood wanted to make it. Why? Because it makes the corporation the good guy. And as we know, in every Hollywood movie, the corporation is the bad guy, and the government is the good guy. The mom and pop government FBI! is the good guy, coming running in with the sticker on their back that says FBI, they save the day. So Ayn Rand's great book, Atlas Shrugged, sat on the shelf for decades and decades. And everybody else was making every other movie bashing corporations from Robocop on down to James Cameron's Avatar. I mean, here we not only have corporations in America that are evil, the corporations all over the universe and solar system That's are Jesus. evil. Their damn village happens to be resting on the richest unobtainium deposit within 200 clicks in any direction. I mean, look at all that cheddar. <laughs> so Ayn Rand dared to make a movie where yes. the corporation wasn't the evil guy, and Hollywood just cannot have something like that. If the project does not mirror the interests, values, cultural perspectives, or prejudices of the makers, it does not get made in Hollywood. And movies about good corporations do not interest the Hollywood control group. Interestingly, Profit does interest the Hollywood control group, but only if it's their profit and its acquisition does not interfere with the control group's political or religious bias. This is why Mel Gibson's movie, The Passion of the Christ, was not financed by a major studio, even though Gibson is an A-list talent and his previous pictures have garnered over $1.5 billion in revenues for the MPAA studio distributors. Movies like that and, and, and anything to do with, has any biblical context or any kind of a spiritual message, the studios simply, for the most part, don't get behind. All said, Hollywood's ostensible disdain for profit and corporations is disingenuous, if not ironic, for the studios, networks, and their parent conglomerates are some of the most profitable corporations on the planet. Accordingly, executives garner some of the highest salaries in the world. Well, there is a lot of money being made in Hollywood, and, and uh, it's, it's reported all the time in the, in the press. And a lot of the studio executives and a lot of the top talent are paid a significant amount of money, uh, unbelievable amounts of money. But I don't think it's fair to say, well, that's, that's a bribe for being quiet. On the other hand, it is fair to observe that people who are paid a lot of money for what they do tend not to complain. For instance, in 2014, Rupert Murdoch, CEO of 21st Century Fox, earned $29.2 million. Brian Roberts, CEO of Comcast, earned $31.4 million. Jeffrey Bukes, CEO of Time Warner, earned $32.5 million. Robert Iger, CEO of Disney, earned $34.3 million. Phillips Dahlman, CEO of Viacom, earned $37.2 million. And thanks to the star system and its greedy, rude agents, A-list stars routinely get $20 million per picture. Some more, like Robert Downey Jr., who got $75 for Iron Man, and Leonardo DiCaprio, who got $25 million for The Wolf of Wall Street, another capitalist-loathing movie that dramatizes how big and bad corporations are. Salaries uh, are certainly not necessarily in Hollywood commensurate with talent or, or being deserving. Same thing's true on Wall Street. The salaries are totally disproportionate to, you know, the, the, the real worth of the talent or the studio head. 
So, the idea that the movie business is a risky business is simply a conspiracy theory. The Hollywood corporations make as much or more money than any of the big, mean corporations it endlessly depicts. And a very small portion of the pie, you know, goes to the real creative people who are trying to, you know, present their artistry as best they can, because the bigger portion of the pie goes to the moguls. 